Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to be looking at Unit 2, Lesson 5, Hormones, and we will also be looking at their effects on behavior. So let's get right into it. So to begin with, let's look at the function of hormones. The function of hormones is actually similar to that of a neurotransmitter in that they both are chemical messengers. However, they're still very different in mainly two vital processes. Um, hormones are actually released into the bloodstream where they can last for a pretty long time, such as adrenaline, um, which is released during the fight or flight response, which has really prolonged effects, even um, really minutes or hours after an incident. Um, however, neurotransmitters um, are really quickly administered and they can dissipate or get metabolized or taken up by reuptake or absorbed by the other cell membrane really quickly. So hormones are more um, lasting as they are released into the bloodstream compared to neurotransmitters. And they're also more vast in terms of their network as the blood network is more large than the neurotransmitter synapse network. And um, moreover, hormones can regulate long-term processes like the menstrual cycle, um, like growth or metabolism, digestion, while neurotransmitters are just really quick impulses. Moreover, we still have to understand that the nervous system and the endocrine system, which is the system of hormones, are still interdependent. Hormones are released by endocrine glands. And you can um, look at the many different types of endocrine glands in your textbook on page 79, where we have the kidneys, the thymus, the pineal gland, the hypothalamus, and many different endocrine glands. Hormones only influence cells that have a receptor for the specific hormone. So these cells are called target cells. The hormone, when released into the bloodstream, will go out and will be. Um, taken in by only the target cells, which will have a receptor, which will allow the hormone to bind into that receptor and cause a series of changes. Once the hormone binds to the receptor on a target cell, it'll launch a sequence of changes, which can be genomic or relating to genes. This is involved in gene activation and suppression. So basically, when a hormone binds to a receptor on a target cell, it will then cause a, um, an amplification of different um, like reactions in the cell. We don't need to know much specifics about that because we are not in a biology class. We are learning about psychology. So basically, all you need to know is that the um, binding will cause a series of changes which will change um, transcription, translation, and then it will result in a gene change. A gene will be expressed or suppressed. And the most well-known hormones include adrenaline, as discussed before, nor noradrenaline, cortisol, a stress hormone, oxytocin, known as the cuddle hormone, insulin, testosterone, and estrogen. Oxytocin is actually produced in the hypothalamus and it's released in the bloodstream by the pituitary gland. This plays a role in reproduction, childbirth, and special bonding, especially in lactation, and when released during kisses or hugs. And this is as a result called the love hormone. Romero et al. conducted in 2014 was actually a study based on oxytocin and the effect it has on mammals. So this demonstrated that oxytocin promotes social bonds in mammals in non-reproductive contexts. There's actually participant dogs who were intranasally sprayed with some oxytocin. And as a result, they showed more affection towards their owner. And this affection was operationalized by sniffing, licking, gentle touching with the nose or paw, play bouts, and bodily contact. And they also, the dogs spent more time close to their owner. So basically, oxytocin triggered social interaction. So basically, in this context, oxytocin promoted social activity between the dog and um, the owner. So the dog was more willing to go out and um, appease their owner and like socially engage with them. So we, we should know that um, there's a bi-directional relationship. So oxytocin triggers social interaction and social interaction affects the release of more oxytocin. 
So if, if you got administered with some oxytocin, that would trigger more social interaction within you. And that social interaction will in turn increase the oxytocin in your um, bloodstream, which is related in a bi-directional way. This research also thanked their dogs after for participating. Very ethical of them. Well, that's it for hormones. Thank you guys so much for um, listening. Um, can't wait to see you next lesson for pheromones.